Who that to the Who That Nation? Welcome to the Dome Patrol Podcast, your podcast for the New Orleans Saints here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and we have went final in week three for the New Orleans Saints as they took on the Philadelphia Eagles and the New Orleans Saints for the first time this season have lost. Yes, the uh, Saints fall to the Philadelphia Eagles in the Superdome by the score of 15 to 12. And that is odd. (laughs) That is odd to me. And if you watch this game, it is so frustrating. You know, it, it, it was a frustrating game. This was a throwback Saints game for the past, I would say, two years. This felt like a Pete Carmichael uh, offense for the New Orleans Saints this week, where the New Orleans Saints can only muster up 12 points after scoring 40-plus in two consecutive weeks. Now, we all know, anybody who watched football long enough to know that a football is made out of pigskin, know that no team in the NFL, I don't care how good, how talented, how well coached you are, you're not going to score 40 points for 17 straight weeks. It, it's impossible. It's impossible. It Teams will get better. Teams will start to adjust. And it's going to be, a, you know, more difficult to put up some points. I, I fully expected that. And I fully expected a hard-fought victory um, or game, not a victory because we didn't win, uh, but a hard-fought game. Uh, against the Philadelphia Eagles because it's always a battle with this team. But 12 points? 12 points. Uh, and and when you break it down, <laughs> it's even more disturbing. I mean, think about it. The Saints' defense played their hearts out until that last drive. You know, that basically cost us the game. And I hate to say that. Uh, about the defense because the defense played out of their minds today. You you realize the Saints defense forced two turnovers. Uh, they blocked the punt. They stopped Philadelphia on fourth down, not once, but twice, which is essentially turnovers within itself. So you can say that's four turnovers and a blocked punt, but it wasn't enough. That wasn't enough. And held this held the Philadelphia Eagles to 15 points, but that wasn't enough to make up for it. Uh, this offense that just sputtered today. I, I really don't know um, where to pinpoint uh, deficiencies today it, offensively, because as far as Derek Carr and Alvin Kamara and all that, they they look good. That wasn't the problem. The problem was the play calling. Uh, it it really was the play calling that uh, betrayed the New Orleans Saints today in their efforts to defeat the Philadelphia Eagles. But the loss drops the Saints to two and one, and it improves the Eagles to two and one. The Eagles were scoreless without uh, Saquon Barkley, their running back, um, doing anything in the first half. He did absolutely nothing. I don't think he touched the ball in the first quarter. He did absolutely nothing. But (laughs) good things come to those who wait because he broke a 65-yard touchdown run with about 13 minutes left in the game, and that that pretty much uh, started to steamroll for them. Uh, That was their only big play of the game. Well, two. They had two big plays. It was their uh, 65-yard run. And then that big play to Dallas Goddard, who uh, I think that was like a 60-yard pass uh, play. And that set up their go-ahead run in for the touchdown to pretty much seal the deal for us. But it it was, uh, man, it was just so frustrating to watch. It was frustrating to watch because there's no reason we should have lost this game. Uh, Nick Seriani, the head coach for the Eagles, I don't know if if, I need to go back and watch the game and see if he was wearing a T-shirt that said, please fire me because he did everything in his power to lose his job today. He did everything to lose his job. Going for it on fourth down in scoring position twice. 
is ridiculous. Is utterly ridiculous and didn't get him. He didn't convert. <laughs> and the Saints defense stopped him. The Saints defense got two turnovers, as I said before. You know, the Saints uh, uh, special teams got a block punt. But we can only muster up 12 measly points on offense. I am so confused as to what happened to this team today. I, I was so confused, you know, on top of that, uh, uh, Philly, you, this is a Philly without AJ Brown. He didn't play at no point in the game cause he was hurt. He was out during the game. They lost their other star receiver. Actually, they lost two of their receivers during the game. They lost two of their, uh, offensive linemen during the game. Uh, they lost their best corner during the game. And they lost all these players, made all these mistakes, and they found the way to win the game. And the Saints, yeah, we lost some players. We lost. We had some big uh, 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 injuries that took place today that we're going to go over, and that affected this team. I, I especially um, Eric McCoy. Eric McCoy went out early in the first quarter and uh, you could tell the mood of the team kind of just went with him when he limped off the morale limped off with him uh it's a groin injury so uh, we know that groins are that's that's going to be a lengthy thing if it's something serious fingers crossed and prayers up that is not but it didn't look good uh so uh and he's the anchor him and Cesar Ruiz are the anchors on that offensive line. Even Ruiz got hurt for a little while, but he ended up going back in the game. But there were some major uh, blows applied to the Saints uh, injury-wise during this game, but I still can't use that as an excuse. Uh, We still had enough to beat this team. At least we should have had enough to beat this team, and we didn't. We we didn't. Uh, This is the Saints' uh, biggest adversity that we were going to face early part of this season. You know, I know the Chiefs are coming up in a couple of weeks, but uh, this was the one. This was the one I really, really wanted. I really, really wanted this one because uh, not for any bragging rights or anything like that, but this was the test. Uh, Dallas wasn't the test for me. This was the test for me because – this is a team that has been a thorn in the New Orleans Saints side for a few years now. So if we were turning the curve, if we were getting that monkey off the back and we were uh, uh, starting anew and we're on this track to be an actual playoff contender, we had to cross this hurdle. And that would have made me feel better. That that would have got me on board with all the hype and all the talk. But No. It didn't happen. Even with a loss, I still would have felt good. Now, it was only a three-point loss, but that it doesn't feel like a three-point loss. It, it feels like a game that you lost. Philly didn't come in here and beat you. You lost it, just like last week with Philly. You know, that's why I feel Philly ain't going nowhere. The Philly, <laughs> uh, all due respect, they came and they won the game. Uh, kudos to the Eagles. Uh for winning this game, uh, but they're not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> when they played Atlanta, they gave Atlanta that game. They gave Atlanta that game. They came in here and did the exact – actually, they did it worse. They doubled up on it this week. But we couldn't capitalize. These are the games you need to take advantage of and capitalize. In that. Oh, man, it, it's, it's, it's painful. It's really painful to think about all that we're – the golden road was laid out before you and you you managed to run off the road into a tree it, only the saints could do <laughs> only my saints can do that anywho let's break down some stats here uh, this this is one i'm <laughs> i'm not going to talk much about because it's frustrating the more you think about it the more frustrating it gets uh, but let's break down the stats of this week's matchup against the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's begin with passing leaders. Uh, for the New Orleans Saints, of course, it was Derek Carr. He was 14 for 25, 142, one touchdown, one interception. He was sacked once today. 
Uh, Jalen Hurts for the Philadelphia Eagles. He was 29 of 38, 311 yards, no touchdowns, and one interception. He was sacked four times today. Leading rusher for the Philadelphia Eagles was, of course, Saquon Barkley, 17 rushes for 147 yards and two touchdowns. And a lot of that is kind of fool's gold because he had that one big 65-yarder. But, hey, it is what it is. Uh, Jalen Hurts, he ran the ball eight times for 25 yards. That was the one thing that I was worried about going into this game. Saints defense did a great job of containing him today. Uh, Like I said, the defense let me down on that last drive of the game, but (laughs) uh, at least the scoring drive to take the lead in the game. But, you know, for three and a half quarters, they did their job it, it was just those two plays two plays oh man leading rusher for the new orleans saints was alvin Kamara. 26 rushes for 87 yards no touchdowns Derek carr two carries for three yards today uh jamal williams one carry for negative one yard another confusing stat for me why was he not involved why why what was the, what was the game plan what was the game plan today, people? Please, somebody help me. Uh, receiving leaders today for the Eagles, their leading receiver was, uh, this is no shock, Dallas Goddard. Their tight end, 10 catches for 170 yards today. Because <laughs> they didn't have anybody else. Devontae Smith was their second leading uh, receiver, seven catches for 79 yards, but he went out. He he. Once they lost him, they had absolutely nothing absolutely nothing uh uh who was it uh paris campbell he had two catches for 13 yards kenneth uh game well two catches for 12 yards you know it, little little stuff like that nobody else stepped up it, but whatever for the saints their leading receiver today was chris olave six catches for 86 yards and a touchdown alvin Kamara, uh uh, uh three catches for 40 yards mason tipton two catches for 11 yards, and Cedric Wilson Jr., one catch for three yards today. Over on defense, the leading uh, tacklers for the Philadelphia Eagles, which is going to sound weird. It's going to sound weird, but this is facts. For the Philadelphia Eagles, their leading tackler today was Zach Braun and C.J. Garner-Johnson, two former Saints. (laughs) Zach Braun had 13 tackles. C.J. Garner Johnson had eight. Uh, for the New Orleans Saints, Paulson Adebo had 10 tackles, and Tyron Matthew had seven. Moving over to team stats, uh, total first downs. The Eagles had 20 first downs today. Saints had 12. That tells you everything you need to know. Third down efficiency, uh, the Eagles were 6 for 14. Saints were 6 for 13. Total plays ran. Eagles ran 67 plays to the Saints, 55. Total yards. The Philadelphia Eagles had 460 yards today to the Saints, 219. Um, Drives. Both teams had 10 drives apiece. uh, Yards per play. The Philadelphia Eagles, 6.9 yards per play to the Saints, 4. Passing. Philadelphia Eagles had 288 passing yards to the Saints, 130. Rushing, Eagles had 172 yards rushing to the Saints, 89. Uh, Red zone efficiency, Uh, Philadelphia were one for three in a red zone. Saints were one for three in a red zone. Like I said, we reverted back to the Pete Carmichael offense today. (laughs) This is so familiar. Uh, Penalties, Philly had seven penalties for 45 yards today to the Saints, three penalties for 25 yards today. Uh, Philly had two turnovers. Saints had one time of possession. Philly won that battle with 32 minutes and 15 seconds to the Saints, 27 minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, It's so, so disappointing. (laughs) <laughs> this is so disappointing, you know, giving giving us hope in the last two weeks. And, look, I, I'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. It, it was one bad game. 
I'm not saying the Saints are, oh, we're back in the gutter again. We're not. We're not. We're going to be all right. Uh, this was just the first test. They failed the test, but we still have some exams coming up that we need to, we need to prepare for. And so th we can learn, build on this, and, and do a more efficient job going forward. Because um, we got two games coming up that are pretty crucial. Uh, you have Atlanta next week, and then after that you have the Super Bowl champs or defending Super Bowl champs in the Kansas City Chiefs. And so these are two, this is why I wanted to get this game. I really wanted to get this game in. Uh, but uh, next week is going to be a, 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 a doozy going up against Atlanta. You know, they, they're already chirping and everything. So uh, this ought to be interesting. But the mere fact that for three and a half quarters, man, <laughs> did you shut these people out? is I don't know man and you couldn't do anything it was three to nothing all the way up to the fourth quarter all the way to the fourth quarter man 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 uh well let's get through the grades and how the grading system works every week after a Saints game I grade every unit of the New Orleans Saints offense defense special teams and coaching we compile those grades average it out for an overall performance of the Saints this week against the Philadelphia Eagles beginning with the offense today the Saints offense after putting up two straight A's in the last, previous two weeks they get a C minus today uh it should have been low but it <laughs> it should have been lower but I'm giving it a C minus because Derek Carr did orchestrate uh that drive in the fourth quarter, the the talent on the field looked good. And so I'm not blaming the talent on the field. They did the best they could. And so it's really going to come down to the coaching, which we're going to get to in a sec. Uh, but I think the offense was kind of hampered by a couple of injuries. Uh, the old line looked a little confused today. And, to say they look confused, I still got to give them props because they only gave up one sack today. And so I, I give them credit for that. Uh, uh, Shadid was shut down completely. He had zero catches today. I think he was only targeted twice, uh, maybe even only once that I know of. But, uh, yeah, they really, they really shut him down today. But, you know, uh, there was no adjustment made. But. Once again, that has nothing to do with that. That's more coaching. Uh, but, yeah, they get a C-minus offensively. Defensively, like I said, they were pitching the shutout to the fourth quarter and really were only beat by two plays in this entire game. They uh, Philly did nothing else <laughs> offensively. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, in that regard, I give the defense a B-minus. And it's for it's for those two plays because those two plays were so. Uh, well, I'll take that back. It wasn't it wasn't the two plays. It was more of the Dal Dallas Goddard catch. That was just unbelievable to me. How they let that play go? Why were they in a dime package? Once again, not the team, not the players on the field. It was more the coaching, which I'm going to get to in a second. Um, but it was it was just a bonehead decision, coaching wise, why they were in that package. Uh, but overall, man, they, they gave us two turnovers. You know, they stopped them on fourth down. And they did everything you could possibly do. Carl Grandison played out of his mind today. Uh, this was defensively, and it hurts my heart because uh, I know people going to blame the defense why we lost that game, and that's not why we lost that game. Uh, but defense gets a B minus today. Special teams gets an A, uh, almost an A plus. I would have gave him an A plus if that first field goal would have went in clean, <laughs> but it hit the upright and bounced in and almost gave me a heart attack. So that for that, I got to ding it and give him an A minus. <laughs> but everything else was great. We got a block punt. Uh, field goals were made. Uh, yeah, I. I have nothing bad to say against the special teams. Coaching, coaching gets a D plus. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I don't know what the game plan. This was. It felt. It felt to me 
that Clint Kubiak was drinking the Kool-Aid. Clint Kubiak was sniffing his own behind. He actually uh, 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 fell into that trap. Like, oh, yeah, I got it going on now. You know, it, it, I can do no wrong. You know, it, it just had that feel because this was a stupid game plan going into this game. Uh, defensively, like I mentioned before, did I mean, that was a great game plan. They contained Jalen Hurst. Jalen Hurst didn't beat you. We lost this game, but Jalen Hurst didn't beat you. This was a good game plan defensively until uh, the end of the game. where It felt like they was in a prevent. It just felt, I don't know. Now, I know players ran into each other. It reminded me, honest to God, that play, I, got, I caught flashbacks of the uh, Minnesota Miracle. It felt like that same play. The only difference was uh, Dallas Goddard didn't score, but he almost did. <laughs> but it just had it had uh, uh, remnants of that play uh, from that defense. But, uh, yeah, coaching gets a D-plus today. Overall, the New Orleans Saints performance in their loss, first loss of the season against the Philadelphia Eagles, yeah, they get a C-minus. Uh, you know, I, I, it wasn't a butt kicking. They didn't get ran out the building or nothing like that. But these are the games you got to win. You cannot only muster up 12 points at home. I'm, I'm taking a side. You put up 91 points in the previous two weeks. We're going we gonna to move that to the side. But you at home. You're going up against a team coming off of a short week. They play Monday night. And so they're coming off of a short week, and they're coming in limping in, actually, with injuries, having injuries during the game, and you lose. <laughs> they turn the ball over, you lose. You block punt, you lose. I mean, my God, I mean, everything, the football gods shine down. They stood in front of you with the shaft, uh, with their staff, I should say, and the Red Seas parted, and you refused to walk. You refused to walk through it because you thought you was going to drown, and they end up drowning anyway. It, it was, it was, it's kind of embarrassing. It, it's kind of embarrassing. The only saving grace is the fact that we have 14 more games to make up for it. And so uh, let's let's. Let's soak in it for 24 hours, you know, get mad, curse out a couple of people, and it's on to Atlanta. You know, let's move on. It's, it's, it's not the end of the world, but at the same time, it's frustrating because, man, 3-0 and was right there for you. And I still can't get out of my head because I, I was talking to my cousin during the game, and I'm like, man, they need to fire Nick Seriani right now. He needs to be fired. I would say that at halftime. This dude, because they should have, honest to God, they should have been destroying the Saints. They should have been destroying them. But he literally just, he was asking the Saints to beat them, and we wouldn't do it. It was it was funny to me. It was like, nah, we want to do it on our own. That's the, that's the attitude we had. Like, nah, I don't want to take it. I, I want to earn it, you know? No, 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 no. If somebody giving it to you, take it. <laughs> <laughs> take it oh boy well it is what it is it's a loss we're two and one hey, look uh, this is <laughs> funny enough this is where i thought we would be after week three i th i figured we'll be two and one i, I but i end up flip-flopping the win and a loss i thought we was going to lose against dallas and beat the eagles we end up beating dallas and losing to the eagles so this I'm on board. I'm I'm right where I thought we would be, uh, but I was hoping we would be better. But that's where we at with it. Uh, next week we take on the Falcons, and uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully this is a learning experience. Hopefully, um, Clint Kubiak and Dennis Allen it would do a better job, have the team uh, well prepared to play it, because they didn't look prepared to play. It looked like. They thought they were going to roll in there and uh, intimidate the Eagles, and they can do what they want to do. And, no, the Eagles came 
with a game plan. They actually came. Uh, they didn't let uh, adversity uh, get in their way. They did what they had to do. And, you know, I got to respect them for that. Once again, the New Orleans Saints fall to the Philadelphia Eagles yet again uh, by the score of 15-12, to 12, bringing our record to 2-1 and one on the season so far through three weeks of the year. I would love to know what do you think about this week's performance against the Eagles? Are you are you just shaking it off like, look, it's, it's a little bump in the road. We'll be all right uh, on to next week against the Falcons. Uh, and, or or are you? is the world ending for you? Oh, I knew it. I knew it was fool's goal. I knew we weren't that good and all this here. Yeah, relax. <laughs> relax. It's one loss. Now, if we go out there next week, just like I was saying when we won, when we won against uh, Carolina, I didn't fly out the window and yell Super Bowl. Even when we beat Dallas, I was, now, I'm not going to say we're going to the Super Bowl, but we're looking good. You know, but I'm not overly excited, just like with this loss. I'm not overly uh, mad. You know, it is what it is. It's a loss. It's <laughs> Let's try to bounce back from it. Let's see if we can bounce back from this. I, I think we can. I think we'll be all right. Uh, you know, as uninspired that they looked, they still were in this game uh, throughout the game. So that gives me a little sliver of hope. But I would love to know your thoughts. Email the show at kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. You can also contact the show on all social media platforms. Just search for the KB Radio Network. Also on YouTube, subscribe to the KB Radio Network channel. Like this video if you don't mind. Share this video if you don't mind. And while you're in the giving mood, don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you are currently listening, to the Dome Patrol podcast here on the KB Radio Network. Everybody, thank you for joining me for this recap and reaction to the Saints' first loss of the season versus the Philadelphia Eagles, 15-12. to 12. Uh, Oh, I forgot to go around the NFC South. Um, well, as recording, two, two of the NFC South opponents are playing. Uh, I think Carolina is winning. Carolina is beating the Raiders right now at halftime, <laughs> which, which is funny to me. I mean, beating them. It's like 21 to 7 or something at halftime. And uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers got monkey stomped by Denver earlier today. And so that's great news for us, <laughs> you know, because we still tied for first. And so we're still good in that aspect. And Atlanta plays later on tonight against the Chiefs. So. We're, we're still in good shape. You know, that's why I said it's not the end of the world. You got to look at everything in its totality. We, 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 we're still in good shape. We would have just been that much better had we won. But no point crying over spilled milk. You can catch this show as we return. Uh, what is it? Friday as we per, uh, preview the upcoming matchup against the Atlanta Falcons uh, in Atlanta. So uh, that ought to be an interesting game. <laughs> That's going to be very interesting. I can't wait for that. I want everybody to cheer up, you know, get your chin out your chest. It's all right. It's not the end of the world. We'll bounce back. This is, this is uh, just, a, just a little speed bump. It's all good. Uh, we'll be back on track next week when we beat the feathers off of them Falcons. Until then, I'm going to still be screaming, who that?